back in action we go with another vintage cube draft. Hello, friends. Kenji Numatanami. Egeshira here. And uh, yeah, more vintage cube. Can't get enough of this vintage cube. A fine vintage indeed. In fact, I have a nice fine vintage that I'm slurping on right now myself. Ah, yes, indeed. Anyway, let's jump into the draft. No power. In fact, not really any super standout cards. Noble Hierarch, Mentor, Brutality, Shinobi, Deceiver, Recurring Nightmare. Uh, we tried to force Storm last time. It didn't go so well. I think I'm going to take the Deceiver Exarch this time and see if maybe we can get some combo nonsense going. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this had to be a pack, well, obviously, with multiple pieces of power in it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that person here took either Soul Ring or Black Lotus, but we just got a second pe uh, pick Ancestral with a Mox Jet, a Mana Drain, and funny enough, the gosh darn Splinter Twin to go with the Deceiver Exarch I first pick. Now, I mean, there's no way I'm not going to take the Ancestral Recall here, but that is just kind of absurd. Wow, what a stacked pack that was. Um, so yeah, for sure, the person, whoever opened this pack, my guess is they took Black Lotus or Soul Ring. Um, but yeah, we're we're going to take this Ancestral Recall, passing a Mox Jet third pick, and hoping to wheel the Splinter Twin, but holy smokes. You don't see that every day. Usually you see like, well, I take that back. Usually you don't see power, right? The odds of you opening one aren't very high. Um, and so getting multiple in the same pack is kind of hilarious anyways let's just uh yeah let's just move on and gonna take basically the only blue card in this pack which is the miscalculation Thassa's oracle is gonna wheel 100 percent of the time uh it's either this or like Doretti, but i see no reason to not just cut off the blue as hard as i can and given the fact that uh the person passed me the ancestral um they might try to avoid blue now which means i can potentially keep getting hooked up into it so Keep taking the blue cards. It's always nice to have interaction anyways. And uh, even if we don't wheel like the Splitter Twin, uh, we still have a fantastic blue start otherwise. So, yeah, that's... <laughs> doesn't get much better than that. Okay, now, fourth pick. And we have another really fantastic card here, especially in Vintage Cube. That's going to be the Dak Faden. It's already in... Um, blue, and it's already in the secondary color that we want to pair with blue, given that we have the Deceiver Exarch, so no hard choice here. Dak Faden, easy pickup. Uh, some other fine cards, but I don't think anything is actually close to vintage power level uh, to the Dax. Man, this is this is an amazing start to the draft. Uh, the only awkward thing is that we passed that Splinter Twin in the Ancestral Recall pack, so somebody might scoop that up, but... Um, Again, even if we don't get the Splinter Twin, we could still pick up Kiki Jiki for the infinite combo. Um, or we could just go into a, a very solid base blue deck otherwise. For those not aware, with Deceiver Exarch, what you can do is uh, copy it with either Splinter Twin or Kiki Jiki, and then um, untap either Kiki Jiki or the, the Deceiver Exarch with the Splinter Twin on it, and create infinite hasty creatures. That then kills your opponent, of course. Anyways, let's move on to pick number five here, which looks like could be just a Gear Hulk. Uh, goes pretty nicely with both Ancestral and the Miscalc that we have right now. Only other consideration in blue-red here for me would be like the Chain Lightning. Um, other notable cards in this pack are green, namely the Draga Tree Speaker and the maybe not so green uh, Gaia's Cradle. But for now, again, I don't mind just continuously are continuing to take the blue cards since uh, we have a fantastic start for those. And it looks like green might be a little bit open too. A lot of mana dorks going by, but I'm happy to just take this Demir Signet. Uh, passing like a Necromancy. Yeah, no big deal. Easy pickups here for me. And wow, another pretty solid pack here overall. Uh, I'm almost wondering if I want to take like the Blightsteel Colossus here. It's good if I like pick up Tinker. It's good if I move into like a sneak attack, sneak attack or through the breach deck. Other fine picks include like Boros Signet, Memory Jar. There's a big, um, 
consideration to borrow signet because not only does it produce red, but white is also a really common color to pair with blue and red, especially in this style of deck. Um, the Blight Steel is swingy. I think the Boros Signet more of the time is going to be better. Notably, I'm passing like a Jar and a... Uh, um, oh gosh, I don't even remember what was in that pack now. But <laughs> anyways, multiple other good cards as we take this Sower of Temptation over Fintorn Elf. Again, looks like the green deck is open, but we have a pretty fantastic start for ourselves, so I can't complain. Yeah, Wheeling like the Noble Hierarch. And in fact... You know what, now, at this point, I could just take the Noble Hierarch after seeing all of these good green cards go around. Like, if we're going to start to wheel cards like Noble Hierarch, it might be correct to do so. Academy of Ruins has really high upside. If I ended up getting Mind Slaver, we could do the infinite Mind Slaver combo. But given that green also seems pretty open, yeah, I'm I'm happy to have taken this now. And now, look, we get an Oracle of Moldaya, We get a free Elise on the wheel. So somebody indeed did take the Splinter Twin as this is pick 11, right? So, oh wait, pick 9. No, wait, this was pick 9, pick 10. Yeah, so it would have been in this pack, I believe. Or no, in the previous pack. Either way, it doesn't matter. We'll just keep taking the green cards now. Uh, and Emery actually has some merit here as well for the artifact synergy. I don't think Gargroth is actually all that great. Carnage Tyrant is a good sideboard card, but... Looks like Emery and wow, wheeling the Draga Tree Speaker of all things. Okay, well, I think I read the signals pretty well, and now we're getting uh, kind of rewarded for it. <laughs> Lanamore Elves, too. So remember, I took Noble Hierarch, what was it, ninth pick on the wheel, and then in order we got like Oracle, uh, Tree Speaker Witness, Lanamore Elves, whatever, and even Thrag Tusk as a last pick, so. Kind of funny. I guess we might not even be running these Boros sig or these uh, Boros or Demir signets anymore. Ah, that's a little bit saddening though. Like, there was a Progenitus earlier in the first pack, and so that's one of the best hits that you can have for Natural Order. Instead, here we're probably just going to take the Jace. I know, woe is me, right? Um, I I think Natural Order is actually a more broken card, but knowing that I've already passed Progenitus, it's a little bit lower lower on my totem pool. That being said, we wield all the mana dorks, and uh, Natural Order is still going to be fantastic here. It's actually really close. I think Natural Order is more likely to wheel is the thing, especially given how green was open. So let's just take the Jace and move on with our lives. Uh, yeah, nothing too great here for me. I can probably end up cutting this Deceiver Exarch now. Questing Beast is fine. I think I like it a little bit more than Elves of Deep Shadow. There's an Underground Sea that we could consider. If this was a better fixer for DAC, I would probably end up taking it. But right now, DAC is not even necessarily a thing I need to be running. So let's just take the Questing Beast. And uh, lock ourselves into eh, the blue-green nummies, as I always say. Really strange first pack. Well, I guess Emery's kind of a cut here, too, as well. I mean, in fact, we don't really have that many blue cards, all things considered. Wow, we're getting a channel now, too? Okay. We got ourselves a game plan here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now we're going to be looking for some colorless bombs. Any of the Eldrazi would be fantastic. Something like Sundering Titan, Mir Battle Sphere, um, Green Sun Zenith. Let's see. Finale of Devastation. Fantastic with channel, but it's an easy pickup here for me. Okay. Um, I don't think it's my ideal card for channel, but Hydroid Crisis is also pretty good here. Like, Dried of the Elysian Grove is okay, whatever. Walking Ballista, it's fine with channel, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, I wonder, could I take the Ballista here and wheel the Crisis? That's probably a thing as well, right? Let's try that instead. I'll take the Ballista and try to wheel the Crisis and... You know, I'm not going to be super upset if we don't wheel it. Oh, dang it. See, this is this is the kind of pack that we have where we're a little bit sad. I think overall the Crater Hoof Behemoth is going to play better in this deck than 
the Kozilek, but obviously Kozilek is better with channel, as you can like play a turn two Eldrazi. But I mean, if we wheel, for example, um, the natural order, we're going to be so much happier that I picked up this Crater of Behemoth. There's a Through the Breach, Power Stone, Signet. We're happy to take a Wall of Roots. More creatures, more better for Behemoth purposes, for sure. And if we wield the Natural Order, then that's higher upside on that as well. Okay, now we have the Green Sun and we have a Devoted Druid. I think I'm going to take the Green Sun here just because it's better with the channel. And uh, given how open green was in the first pack, I'm expecting to still see a lot of green in, well, not even uh, just pack 3, but the rest of pack 2 as well. So that was pick 12, so not next pick, but I think it's the pick after where we're hoping to see the natural order, or maybe it was the pick after that, but uh, anyways. Something I do need to look for now is blue-green fixing. Wow, yeah, we're getting a Primeval Titan sixth pick. I mean, that should tell you all you need to know about how open Green is, as we're passing a Basalt Monolith, a Chromox, an Ugin, an Ashiok. Still a ton of playables in that pack, too. Crazy thing. Kind of hard to pass the prime time. And that gives me good confidence that we could potentially wheel uh, the Natural Order. At least it's more likely we're going to wheel the Natural Order, unless somebody takes it just because for hate drafting purposes. I mean, I don't recall how deep that particular pack was, but yeah, there you go. Fantastic. <laughs> In fact, what it could be happening is I'm like going to cut the Jace and the Miscalculation just because they're so hard to cast. And we're just going to be like mono green splashing Ancestral. That could definitely be a thing. Okay. Uh, Elves of Deep Shadow is not the ideal elf, but it's still fine in this deck for sure. Um, shoot, what was the pack... What pack had the Gaia's Cradle in it? It was the Draga Tree Speaker pack, right? We did wield the Tree Speaker, but the Cradle here would also be pretty darn good, especially with the prime time being able to tutor it out. I mean, I've I can't complain. Like moved into the correct color, getting rewarded, and we have some good uh blue cards to go along with what we have. Uh, Garrick is fine. Not the ideal card, but it does have some really good abilities versus specific decks. Okay, there's Dryad of the Elysian Grove, and we did wheel the uh, Hydroid Crisis, which I think I like a little bit more. Dryad is fixing, sure. Um, and it's fine with like Oracle or whatever, but I think we're still looking for the Crisis. Ooh, and we got the Primal Command as well. Pretty nice. Primal Command, fantastic with uh, Channel, as it lets you Primal Command, you know, pretty easily. And then with Primal Command, you can tutor up another creature to cast. So we did not wield the Kozilek, but still, again, feeling pretty confident in our situation here. There's a Snapcaster Mage, Tireless Tracker, Cultivate. Um... Are we going to wheel the Cultivate? Probably. So I wonder if I just take the Tracker here. The Snapcaster Mage is just not quite good enough in our deck. Since we're ending up in so heavy green as opposed to blue. So I think I kind of like taking the Tracker here. And uh, trying to wheel the Cultivate. Seems good to me. Library of Alexandria, Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, Elvish Mystic, all fantastic. I think here, and especially since the Kozlek was taken, I'm going to make sure I just get one of these huge threats for channel. And this is one of the better ones. Um, it doesn't have Annihilator, but it this has a very, very nice cast trigger, which can win the game more often, even than, say, something like your uh, drawing four cards with Kozlek. Okay, and now I think I might actually take sp Time Spiral here. One of the things I like about Time Spiral in the green deck is that you dump out your Mana Dork so quickly uh, and get so so much mana so quickly that, you know, refueling is pretty darn good. Breeding Pool, that was one of the cards that I just couldn't pass here if I saw it. Breeding Pool, uh, Tropical Island, and then basically any of the other blue-green lands like Lumbering Falls or... Um, 
what's the blue green fast land called botanical sanctum I don't, I don't think i could pass any of those cards especially when we have enough playables cobra's nice rex sage is nice the land is just fantastic and now we get a rafelos rafelos here uh yeah easy pickup great deck right now i am very very happy with this i guess i'm a little bit concerned about interaction but a lot of the times the way that I interact with the opponent is just, you know, killing them. Um, let's see. I'm wondering if Eternal Witness is worth it. Wow, what a pack. Birds of Paradise, Lumbering Falls, and an Upheaval. Okay, so this, I think this is going to be one of the scenarios where I actually take Upheaval over Lumbering Falls. The Upheaval with this much fast mana is just way too good and a great way to not only interact but just win the game on the spot. It's too too frequently in this deck can you play upheaval, float a bunch of mana, play a bunch of mana dorks out, you know, and just have a board presence immediately where your opponent is just going back to turn one. So I think here I'm going to cut the Garrick. Um, <laughs> Nissa plow under Arbor Elf. Yeah, I mean, I I want to take the Elf here, but Nissa is just way too good. Hopefully. There's a way that we can wheel some other good green cards, right? We were planning on wheeling some cards, but um, I've taken a lot of the top end game now as we pick up a Courser here. Courser pretty nice with Jace. Get to brainstorm, put a land back on top, and then play it off the top with the Courser, of course. Man, just... I'm actually at too many playables. I might be cutting like the Ballista. I might cut... Can I cut the Questing? I guess the Miscalc is an easy cut. And then 16 lands seems probably fine. My only concern with this type of deck is that sometimes you're going to draw the big part of your deck and none of your early game. And in fact, I'm actually not as good on the early game as I would want. Like... We got a ton of mana dorks at the tail end of pack one, but um, I've kind of passed them for just the power cards here in packs two and three. So there's the Wield Cultivate. We're hoping to, to get some more cheap, cheap acceleration at this point. I'm just trying to think of cards to cut. Perfect. There's one of the cards that we wanted to wheel on the wheel. I mean, I guess I don't need the Questing Beast. This card is still so, so fantastic and vintage, it's surprising. Or maybe not, but I guess with what I already have in my deck, it's probably unnecessary. I mean, Hermit, again, fantastic with Crater Hoof Behemoth. I just don't think it's going to make the cut here. So is there any reason I would want the Temple Garden? Looks like no. See, we're at 25 playables, so I probably need to cut one more. 15 is probably doable. I, I tend to err on the safe side of things. Uh, Rex Age is another fantastic pickup. Okay, we can put that in the board. I'm, I'm wondering if I want to cut the Eternal Witness. It's great with like Ancestral and Upheaval, but not too much else in the deck, really. Uh, plow under two, of course. Yeah, I think I want to play that. Jeez. I guess I can probably cut some top end. I'm not sure what I'm cutting. I mean, Eternal Witness Ancestral Recall is the dream, but... I don't even think we need that. I just have too many playables here. Woe is me, right? Maybe the Krasis is the worst? It could be the worst of my options at this point. I think I still like the Primal Command a little bit more than it. Yeah, I mean, really, this deck is just missing um, some more blue-green dual lands, but wow, we are... We are looking very, very good. I don't know how many islands I'm going to run. Maybe like four tops? This would give me 12 forests. The nice thing is I have a bunch of other ways to produce blue. Um, cultivate the best of them. But 
a few other ways to grab blue sources. You know, the the cultivate can grab two blue, the prime time can grab two blue, and then I have like the noble hierarch as well. I'm a little bit questioning the Jace because Jace, I kind of need the early early blue, whereas with Spiral and Upheaval, I'm not normally going to cast them super early, or at least not always. God, could it be right to cut Jace? That's so weird. Cut the Jace and just run like Reclamation Sage. Or maybe I should be running the Demir Signet for extra ramp and fixing. Ooh, that's hard. <sighs> I mean, it's it's just one card. All right, I think we can run it. This this deck either way looks fantastic. Let's see how it plays out. Okay, here we are for round one of this Vintage Cube with our very good green-blue deck. Uh, we are on the draw here with... I mean, when I think of Vintage Cube, I don't think of a hand like this, but it's certainly not a mulligan. Oh, it looks like we're playing a mirror match of sorts. Okay. Well, I say of sorts. Both of us have the same exact turn one land and plays. So what does that mean for us? We have like a Sower in our sideboard. Uh, Garrick in the sideboard. And a Walking Ballista. As opponent does not have a second play. Alright. So that means for us, as I draw land land, I'm going to go turn one Wall of Roots. Oh, sorry, turn one... Turn, one, turn two Wall of Roots, and then um, turn three here. We're going to Primal Command their land away, and then tutor up like Primeval Titan. Right? Yeah, we'll have five mana next turn, so get to pseudo time walk them, depending on if they have a play this turn now. Might be a quick one if they don't. Yeah, it might be a quick one indeed. I mean, I don't like you keep a six that has um, a land and a mana dork for sure, I would say. Well, this is going to be good because I drew channel, so I get to put that land on top of their library. Then I get to grab Ulamog, and then next turn I get to channel Ulamog. And they're left with zero permanence, so. I feel bad, but this makes for good content. <laughs> oh, wow. Even drew Nyssa. Oh, this game's going to be over real fast, isn't it? I don't want to say this is the perfect game. But it's pretty darn close. Hmm. Turn four, I have Ulamog, Nissa. You know, eight permanents on the battlefield. My opponent has zero. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next. So, Ballista, I said, would probably be good. Garrick is probably going to be good. Sower is probably going to be good. Although, again, the double blue, I think, is going to keep me off of bringing in that one. But we'll bring in the Garrick. Uh, I actually like Plow Under a little bit less on the draw versus another green deck. Uh, just because they might be able to go underneath on the play. We'll bring in the Ballista for some of their mana dorks. And what are we cutting? What do we cut? I guess Courser of Crew Fix. I like the Oracle a lot more since it lets us play extra lands. Not that Courser is bad and we get to play Courser on turn 3. It's just... The life gain is a lot less relevant. All right, game two here. Uh, another fine hand for sure. Can't mulligan that one. We get to go turn one elf, turn two wall of roots uh, with Rafelos, and then go from there. Yeah, this is just like a mirror match for sure. Opponent playing Breeding Pool as well. Ooh, are they going to consider dazing this? Ooh, they might have a daze in their hand with that pause. Ah, there's Sultai. Okay. Great. 
Green Sun for one. Okay, get that Alanamore Elf. Hmm. So the question becomes, do I play around days? I guess I'm not going to. Let's force the issue. If they have it, they have it. Or a force of will even, I guess. Oh, no, okay. So with the forest, I have actually eight mana next turn, although I would have to tap both Rafelos and the Elves of Deep Shadow to play out the Crater Hoof, so it's probably not quite worth running out. Um, hmm. I guess we'll just have to see. Right now they're in a position where they're staring down a lot of mana. So Usually, if a person can deal with a Rafelos this early, they do. So if they have a removal spell, they would probably be wise to fire that off now. But they don't. They have a Dryad, a land, two mana available. Do they redraw Green Sun for one? That'd be funny. Nothing. Okay, we get to untap with a lot of mana, but not necessarily anything to do with that. That's pretty good, though. So let's go Tracker here, then play the land. Go ahead and pop off the clue immediately, since we have two mana still left over. Okay, eh? and the castable Jace next turn is not awful. Uh, do I have lethal next turn? Let's see, play forest, seven, eight. I have five creatures, so five, 10, 15, 20, 24. I have 25 trample damage next turn. Oh, that is a sword of pro green. Okay, so I take four, I discard. Oh man, this is actually, hmm. I guess I'm gonna discard the island and the reason why is I'm planning on playing the Crater Hoof Behemoth next turn. Ooh, they get to kill. Oh, they're killing the island. Now, wait a minute. So now I have to tap an extra creature, but... So I'm going to have 5, 10, 15, 19 trample damage. Oh, not quite. Not quite lethal, right? 5, 10, 15, 19 trample damage. I mean, I assume it's still the right play just to do it. but obviously not as good as having lethal here. <laughs> I'm thinking they probably, oh, I was going to say, they probably want to trade with the tracker, right? Because the crater hoof doesn't trample, and it's the tracker giving me all of the value. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, we hope that they don't have anything super relevant and go from there, I guess. Uro, interesting. I don't think Uro is all that good in cube, um, especially vintage, which is kind of weird since it's so good everywhere else. It's just it's so slow, it's so dirtily, and oftentimes you don't have enough ways to get enough cards in the graveyard to make it work. So I'm just going to be discarding the Jace here. Way too far away from double blue. They'll probably move the sword over to the elf. 
Um, I have them at three on board if they do. Like, if they don't have a follow-up play, I still get to attack with all three of my creatures and put them to three. Uh-oh, this is something worse. This is not just an equip of a sword. Casualties of war. Oh my gosh. Okay. So they kill my 5-5. Five five, they kill a forest. I draw channel. Hmm. I guess I just attack for one here. I want to keep the Rafelos around. And we're definitely going to play out the land. The channel's not going to do too much work anyways, because I'm taking minimum four next turn. So now that we've seen both Dryad and the Sword of Feast and Famine, assuming we lose this game, which it's not looking very good for us, I think the Rex Sage is probably something I want to bring in. Oh, what did they draw now? Another? They do a Krasis. So I have three, six, seven. Yeah, that's good enough. I don't think there's anything that can get me out of this at that point. Even Natural Order is not good enough since the Hoof is dead and Prime Time still just leaves us dead on board. So, Okay. Remember, Natural Order can only get green creatures. If you're wondering. I'm actually going to go ahead and cut the Jace. I think all of my other double blue cards are much be much better. Uh, plenty of other cards I could bring in, though, but this, I mean, as expected, it kind of just rotted in my hand, this game. Time Spiral Upheaval still fine. Yes, they're going to have some fast mana as well, but I don't think they're going to have anywhere near as much fast mana as I have. Knowing that they have both Slime and Casualties of War, I wonder if I'm supposed to add like one more island, though, to the deck. Uh, that might be safest just to do so. Alright, let us go to game three here, round one. Ugh. This hand is just so slow is the issue. Oh, man. Hmm. All right. You know what? I'm going to keep this hand. Um, but it could go terribly, terribly wrong. Ideally, we draw a Mana Dork next turn. So that we can go like turn three natural order. All right, fantastic. But that was that was a fortunate draw step for sure. Now it not it's not like I didn't have a ton of them to draw to, but I needed to draw them right then because now we get to go natural order into like uh, primeval titan and really start uh, doing some good work. Okay. Let's grab the breeding pool in a forest. And then next turn we can attack and maybe time spiral depending on what they do. But turn three primeval titan on the play is quite good. Similar to my Rafelos in, what, game one or two or whatever it was. Um, they're going to want to kill this if they can. If they can afford to kill this, they need to. Now, they do access have access to a ton of mana. They have four currently. Okay, Dryad into land, land. That's pretty good. That gives me a Rex Sage target too if I want to, but 
I mean, if they just pass the turn here, I think it's probably still best to attack with the Primeval Titan and then uh, spiral away. We could even redraw the Reclamation Sage, you know? The reason I wouldn't Time Spiral before attacking is because um, I want to thin the deck out so I have fewer lands to draw. Hmm. Primal Command. Well, I could attack and go tutor up uh, Ulamog as well, and I'd be pretty close to hard casting it. In fact, I would be able to the following turn. Eh. It's kind of hard to say. I don't love giving them... Like, now they have only three cards in their hand. I don't love giving them a bunch of mana. Or rather, a bunch of cards to go. So... Very kind. Um, hmm. Ah, it's just too much fun to time spiral. Sorry. Oh, my Lord. And just like that, we might have killed ourselves. Because I drew three mana dorks and four lands. Oh boy. Wow. I'm kind of sad. Not even kind of sad. I'm very sad about what just happened. Okay, Bone Shredder for prime time, so be it. I suppose when I have this... Oh, and they have an Animate Dead now for my Primeval Titan. Fantastic. I guess our best draw now is just Upheaval. Let's see, I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah. I'd be able to Upheaval into Primeval Titan plus... Mana Dork. Man. Oh, that time spiral, though. What the heck? I mean, hopefully I have time. I would guess I probably don't have much time, but... Polychronos now, yeah. Alright, deck. Knock on wood. Let's see, go to 18, 5, 10. Yeah, I'm not going to die next turn unless they also have a Crater Hoof, but if I don't draw something relevant this turn... Ugh. Oh my gosh, look how many lands I have left in my deck, too. I mean... Odds are I'm going to draw another brick next turn, but what an awful way to go out. Five, ten, twelve. Five, ten, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. They're not quite enough to kill me. Not on board, anyways.
Um, yeah, upheaval is still my best bet here. I think they can put me to like one. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ten, fifty. Yeah, they can put me to one life by pumping all of their mana into Polychronos and killing both of my elves and then hitting for 17. All right, <sighs> upheaval or ancestral into upheaval. Sure, that, I, all I need is upheaval. Can I get it? Nissa, not good enough. All right, GG's. Oh gosh, that makes me so sad. But sometimes you roll the dice and it doesn't work out. So let's just win the next two, our deck's insane. I've got faith. And here we are for the second round of this Vintage Cube draft. After I decided to time spiral and hit seven mana sources. So that's probably on me in the end of things. But man, our deck is so good. Hopefully we get to uh, win the next two games. This hand is fantastic. Um, turn two channel is not good here unless we drew Ulamog off the top, but we do get out a pretty fast Oracle of Moldiah. As our opponent leads on Mountain Pass. I'm gonna go ahead and run out the Noble Hierarch into the mountain. Okay, Mountain Mountain, they're probably gonna be on Mono Red is my guess, especially with Firebolt, that's fine. Them killing my mana dorks is not that bad since I've drawn a bunch of land anyways. No creatures turn one or turn two though, so they kept an expensive or very burn heavy hand. Yeah, just running out the shield breaker is a two one. Pretty good for us that they're doing so. Let's go ahead and play the Oracle, hope to find a land on top. If we don't, which we did, I would have been able to play the Island from hand. So Oracle effectively drew a card there, and we're drawing Corsair of Crufix, which don't know if you've played that card versus red decks before, but it's pretty darn good. I get to go Corsair into Cultivate, gain some land, or gain some life and some land as they played a light up the stage, hitting a mountain and a strike. So I'm gonna guess our Oracle's probably gonna get the boot here. Not that that's too problematic given I have Corsair still. Three cards left in their hand. Let's go ahead and play the Corsair. Reading pool, I'm gonna go ahead and pay the two life. Ooh, and now a natural order on top. That gets prime time. I think I'm okay to cultivate here. We have enough juice in our hand that I don't think we need to natural order. We're gonna get Thunder Maw Hellkited here, perhaps. Glorybringer, very similar, sure. So I'm gonna take six, they're gonna exert on the Courser. Okay. I draw a wall of roots. I'm gonna wait one turn before deciding what to do. Though again, if I don't find a little bit of action here, we could just lose next turn realistically. Uh, 
rampaging ferocidon, okay. Oof. That's not what you want to see. They have two cards in their hand. So I kind of just have to run out the behemoth here. I'm going to go to nine life from the ferocidon. I only get to attack for eight. Man, this is not good. Heck, even if I had kept the natural order on top, I don't know if we were winning this game. This is another scenario where I, I probably need to draw, like, upheaval. From the board, we get Thrag Tusk, Garrick, Hydroid Crasis, and Ballista, probably. I think I have to attack here, though. Oh, if they're just going to burn up, aim a burn spell at my face, I'm dead. Yeah, burst lightning to face. They can firebolt the Elf of Deep Shadow, and then I'm just dead on board. Works for me. Let's see if they see the play. Oh, they don't even need to, right? They can just uh, exert the Glorybringer, and that's good enough either way. <laughs> and they did have Thunder Mile Kite. All right. Good beats. Time Spiral, Upheaval, and Jace can all come out. We'll just splash the Ancestral. Bring in the Ballista, Garrick, Krasis. Add some additional forests. Oh, and the Thrag Tusk, of course. There we go. I'm going to cut the Plow Under versus Red as well. And go something more like this. Gosh, if we start 0-2, we'll be so sad. I don't know how I'm going to mulligan a type of hand like this, though, but... Again, if they just go, like, kill your elf, turn one, kill your elf, turn two, then we're going to be a sad, sad green player. You know what we haven't seen once? Unless I'm just forgetting. Ancestral Recall. How hard can it be to draw Ancestral Recall just once in my life? Just once. Pretty please? What if I ask nicely? Looks like they might be taking a mulligan here, debating the hand. All right, they kept their seven. Off to the races we go, and let's see some burn spells. Oh, no, turn one burn spell. Okay. So the worst possible card I could see is probably Fire Ice. Uh, second would be, like, Pyroclasm, but I don't think that would make sense in their deck. So, if we could fade the Fire Ice, that would be fantastic. Run away, Steamkin. All right. No more lands, please. Dear Lord. Please, God, no more land. I've got to turn three Nissa, but... Oh, they just scooped! Oh, God. <laughs> we'll take it. Ugh. Nobody tell the opponent I had nothing left. All right, let's 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 go to game three. We're going to be on the draw versus Mono Red. Let's see if we can uh, curve out on them with fatties. Or maybe, maybe we could get a turn two channel for once. I can't keep this. It's too slow. Maybe on the play I would talk myself into it, but on the draw versus a red deck, that is just way too slow. Well, this hand is pretty good, however. Turn one Mystic. If it survives, I get a turn two Courser. And then, oh my, if, I mean, if we just cross our fingers, draw a channel for an Ulamog would be the nuts as the opponent. Uh-oh. Does have a little bit of fast mana here. So, wouldn't be surprised, what, to see a lightning strike here? Oh, no, Incinerate. Okay, fair enough. I'm guessing my best draw besides channel is like Wall of Roots, a pretty, pretty thick mana accelerant. Okay, that's terrifying. If they're not playing anything with three mana or four mana, they just have like Thunder Maw Hellkite and Glorybringer in their hand. Oh no. And I'm not going to be able to get to five mana next turn. Okay, here come the beats. 
Flame Tongue Kabu. That's pretty good, too. I mean, I have a plan, right? Nissa into Ulamog. It seems maybe good. We just really need to fade a little bit more action from them. Take it. I need my dork. Now, they don't need much to interrupt me if they just kill the Noble Hierarch and I don't draw a Landic, for example. Kind of have a problem. Two cards left in their hand. Here we go. What is one of them? Lightning Strike. They did decide to kill the Hierarch. I like the play. I drew a Tireless Tracker. I mean, that does trade with Flame Tongue Kavu, so... It's not the worst possible draw. Lightning Strike. Okay, Lightning Bolt to t finish it off. Both players on the top deck, but I have three massive spells in my hand. Oh no. Okay. Again, another elf that needs to survive. And this is the turn. If they draw any of their dragons, that will probably wrap up the game. Again, I cannot afford to block this. No plays. One card in hand. Okay. So. The safe play is Thrag Tusk. I think the play that wins more games, though, is Nyssa. And I just attack with the forest here, which will allow me to chump the flame tongue if they draw, draw a way to kill the forest. Can we hold Bomat Courier? Okay. Are they going to attack with it and then pop it? That's a good sign, I think. Yeah, both going face. We're going to put the forest on the flame tongue. Bomat on the 1-1. One, one. Sorry, Elf on the Bomat. Which is also a 1-1, one, one, of course. One card in hand. Five mana. Glorybringer, second main phase. Alright. We'll take it. Ulamog, I summon you. Still just attacking with the forest, because if they draw Zealous Conscripts, I need to have enough blockers, I think. And we still have lethal next turn. It's a close one for sure. <laughs> that is why you are the champ. Well, maybe. Made a mistake, probably in the first round, firing off that time spiral, but... Close match there versus Mono Red. They flooded out for sure, so I think we got a little bit lucky there because if they had just, again, one more piece of interaction, we might have uh, been in trouble. Although I suppose I missed on the fifth land for a while, but let's try to finish strong with the 2 and one with this sweet Mono Green deck. I want to channel Ulamog just like one time, please. And here we are for round three of this Vintage Cube draft with our sweet Mono Green list. Well... Basically mono green. We have Ancestral, Jace, Time Spiral, and Upheaval. We have yet to draw Upheaval or Ancestral Recall. One day. One day we will, and it will feel fantastic. For now, we're on the play with a pretty solid hand. I'm going to lead with the Noble Hierarch, as does produce both green and blue. Though it's possible if I had led with the Elves of Deep Shadow, I would might get in for two damage next turn depending on what we draw which is simply another land I, it could be I made a deck building error for sure 16 land with as many mana accelerants as I have could be uh, too many it's possible 15 land would be sufficient but yeah we can make that change next game Assuming we'll be on the draw. Hopefully we win here. Blood Crypt and a Steam Vents. And a Golgari Signet. Okay, opponent just ramping up as we draw a Tireless Tracker. That's not bad. Could get in for two points of damage here. I think what I would rather do is just pop the clue immediately to make our Tracker three toughness. 
That's hopefully going to mitigate some of the flood. What do you got? Four mana. Sower of Temptation. All right. Don't really mind them taking the trackers. Now I get to slam the Primeval Titan on turn four here. Oh boy. But despite drawing four cards, we have only drawn one actual spell. So. We have to cross our fingers here and hope that this Primeval Titan does not die, or if it does, that I draw some action. Putrid Imp, okay. They are probably on some form of reanimator then. Putrid Imp is only played in that type of deck. Could be Shallow Grave, could be Corpse Dance, could be any of the non-instant speed reanimate effects, but... Given that they're also playing red, we could we can kind of assume they could also be running sneak attack or through the breach. So don't be surprised here if they have like an Eldrazi in their deck that they can instant speed reanimate. <laughs> well, joke's on you. I have nothing. Or maybe the joke's on me still, I don't know. My hand is quite bad. Okay, Courser's not awful. Let's play the Courser pre-combat. Oh, gosh. That seems like a card that I would probably want to draw. So, I'm going to attack with the, the Primeval Titan, and I'm not going to search my library. How awkward is that? Probably pretty awkward. And then we'll just go Breeding Pool Pass. You love to see it, or do you? <laughs> the vast majority of cards that I saw on top, I would leave for sure. Ooh, okay, there we go. End of turn, they discarded Grizzlebrand. So let's see if they got the Shallow Grave or whatever. Corpse Dance. If it's just a reanimate effect, they can only pay seven once, although that's pretty good, of course. Dak Faden, interesting. I mean, there's no reason for them to have discarded Grizzle Brand when they did, really. Like, if anything, that made it worse. That made it so Iona, or not Iona, Putrid Imp doesn't have flying this turn. They did just discard Iona, though. Speaking of, that was what I was looking at. So, if they can reanimate Iona this turn, then they get to uh, turn off my blue spells. Looks like they don't have that, though. All right, so we're going to go for it. We're going to play a land. And I th think I like Slamming Spiral here before they can reanimate their Iona. The awkward thing with Courser of Crufix is that the opponent gets to see what I'm drawing. This, Nissa. Go for the plow under play for sure. So let's get rid of their steam vents and their blood crypt here. Okay, 
We're drawing a lot of lands ourselves, but good news is we get to shuffle them away with our uh, with our primeval titans. Let's plow both their duels. And I think I just like going face with both. I'm going to gain two life here as well when the uh, the lands from the prime time into the battlefield. I'm not sure if leaving them with Dak is the best play, but I mean, this seems pretty good from us. Yeah, and they're just going to scoop it up. Perfect. All right, so they're Grixis reanimator of some sort. I don't have, unfortunately, access to, uh, who's a what's it called? Uh, scavenging ooze. But I do have a sower of temptation. And I th think what we can do is just add another basic island. And in fact, I'm going to just cut a land on the draw. This gives me, what's one, two, three, four, five, still 10 green sources on turn one. So let's do that. For the record, I still have not drawn Ancestral Recall or Upheaval. But we're gonna take a mulligan here and hopefully have one of them in our hand. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go to five, but I might be green sunning for like Noble Hierarch on turn two and then casting Sower on turn three. Oof. These are not the hands that I'm looking for. Opponent also mulligan to five, so. This, I suppose there's some hope yet. Okay. Elves of Deep Shadow. I guess we can wait then. Don't need a tutor or anything yet. They're missing blue right now. Okay, and we drew Corsair. Oh, that's awkward. I have to actually play the land first. But no punish. There was not a land on top of my deck. All right. I mean, if they don't uh, kill Rafelos next turn, then we get to probably Green Sun Zenith for what? Primeval Titan, just win from there. Kind of a sad state of affairs. I don't really get to do anything that the blue deck wanted to be doing. Like, we didn't get to really channel very much. We never drew our Ancestral Recall. We never drew our Upheaval. Not to say we won't in this game, since this game's not going to end very quickly. But I just want to be doing some nasty stuff, you know? All right, Sword of Temptation gone. Fine by me, as I don't actually have a blue source right now. Let's just attack for two. I don't think they offer the trade, but um, I don't want to take that chance because, well, they see the Ulamog on top of my library. I have access to 10 mana next turn, so... Okay, Chrome Mox. Imprinting Woodfall Primus. Yeah, indeed. Another good reanimate target. Liliana. But that, my friend, does not do anything because I just get to Ulamog next turn. We're going to kill the Lily and we're going to kill the Red Source. And then we're just going to Crater Hoof them the turn after. I mean, a fine game. Like, nothing wrong with this. I am crushing the opponent here. It's just, I didn't get to do anything fun, you know what I'm saying? Where's the, uh, the upheaval? Where's the ancestral? Ah, well, so be it. Anyways, still a good deck. I'm glad we got to where we were. Again, I might have punted the first round by casting that time spiral. I even mentioned it was the fun play. Like, I believe I had Primal Command and one other spell in my hand, so very easily could have been a 3-0 deck. In fact, I think this is a 3-0 quality deck. Uh, we just never got to draw our fun cards. So, 
Anyways, good draft. Still enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed this Vintage Cube. There's more Vintage Cube coming because, hey, it's still around and it's still fantastic. Thanks for watching here on the Card Kingdom YouTube channel. We'll see you guys next time.